and welcome to the stream. Uh, now last time we uh, were doing some programming that was uh, fairly useless in JavaScript and uh, Leaflet with OpenStreetMap, but it wasn't quite useless enough. So today we're going to do something completely different. We're going to try to answer a stack exchange question uh, as, as live, or if you're watching this recorded, also live, because the universe repeats itself. So the question asked here is, how often are there lunar eclipses on Jupiter? Um, and the way we're going to look at this problem now, when there's a lunar eclipse on Jupiter, for the most part, it means Jupiter's shadow is falling on one of Jupiter's moons. Uh, for convenience, we will start off by just talking about one of Jupiter moon, Jupiter's moons. And even when we go to sort of a final solution here, we will be talking about the four of Jupiter's moons, the four largest moons, Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. So we won't be going through all of Jupiter's 70-odd moons, although we can. We're going to make this general enough that we could use it for other moons, and even uh, for, you know, how often does Saturn experience a, a lunar eclipse of Titan, or something like that. Uh, but we will start off by focusing on uh, Jupiter's four largest moons, the one that Galileo could see. So... There's a lot of crap here. Some of it's mine. In fact, this part's mine right here. Um, but the ultimate question here is... Um, sorry, I, every so often I have to check I'm actually streaming. I'm very paranoid. Uh, this is a VM, by the way, so uh, it works similar to my own machine, but not identical. So that, that'll add a few more glitches, because they're not quite enough glitches. Also, I don't know how to program in C, but we will be programming in C. So again, that's going to that's gonna hit us uh, pretty hard there, too. So we're going to be using, um, so now the way we want to think about it, uh, because of the, we're going to be using the CSpice libraries uh, to solve this problem, and it turns out the way we want to think about it is, well, if there's a lunar eclipse of Io as viewed from Jupiter, then if you're on Io, it's going to look like the uh, Jupiter is blocking the sun. That's what makes Io dark. Usually, I mean, most planets, you know, and moons, uh, just reflect sunlight. That's pretty much how we get all the light in our solar system. There is a little bit of uh, broadcast light, but um, it's very, very little. So if uh, if you're on Io and it gets dark because Jupiter's between you and the sun, that's a lunar eclipse for Jupiter. So last time we did this, last time we did some programming, we decided that the uh, the bottom up method was not a good idea, and it still isn't. But I'm going to do it anyway because I just hate you pretty much. Just, just so you know. So it turns out the routine we were going to use here is the occultation routine uh, known as GF find, occ find occultation. And this, and um, an occultation can mean eclipse, a transit, or um, the other one. Or, well, an eclipse, transit, or occultation. But so th they mean all three of these things. Okay. So this is what it, uh, this is, these are the um, parameters it takes. And the, uh, the function tells you the time intervals when an observer sees one target occulted by or in transit across an other. The surfaces of the target bodies m may be represented by triaxial ellipsoids or by something we're not going to use because we don't have great topographic data for uh, Jupiter or Io. Um, in fact, Jupiter is a gas giant, so it, it tends not to have uh, real mountains or anything like that. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and just uh, slap this onto our little uh, Emacs, Control C, and then and I, I guess I need to actually go a little bit further than this. Uh, we're going to call it BC Obscurations because I, I think that's a better word for, uh, and it's harder to spell, so yeah, that's always good. Okay, and I should be able to edit paste. Obviously, we can't. This isn't runnable code, um, but it is something we can refer to. By the way, uh, you might notice that the um, the fonts look a little bit stretched out. That is intentional. I could make them the correct aspect ratio, but it turns out that's going to make them everything a lot smaller. And it also turns out my I can't get my VM to get higher than 1024 by 768, and so sort of getting it into this uh, 1600 by 900 real screen that I have also kind of ugly. Uh, but I, but I do want to keep uh, characters big enough that you guys can see them. Um, and if you can't, uh, well, you know, tell, let me know. Uh, again, there's no one here, but if there were, let me know. Um, okay, so now the question is, how do we basically use this function? Um, let's go ahead and look at the types. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to say values 
for Jupiter blocking Sun as viewed from Io. And again, we can go, of course, from Io to Ganymede, Europa, Callisto, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's see what the first parameter here is. They're, they're pretty good about describing their parameters. Um, detailed input. Oh, whoa, 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 why is Spice GF control should not be there? Okay, good, it's not. Uh, that's a constant that they use. They don't use it as a... Uh, okay. The occultation, it, uh, what type is to be found? Transits are considered to be a type of occultation. So, yeah. Um, now, really, we're looking for full, but, you know, just because we want to test stuff, and we will be using uh, Stellarium, uh, which is just a fun program to use, to see if we can sort of see these eclipses or occultations uh, as a verification of what we're doing. And, uh, you know, so, so we're going to just say here, octype equals, well, you know what, maybe we should just actually, let's just see how bad we can make this. Whoa. Edit copy. Edit. Why does Emacs hate me? Well, because it does. Okay. So the occultation type, we can just put it right now, is going to be any. Okay. Um, now the front body is the <laughs> is the name of the target body that a cult is passes in front of the other. Uh, you may supply a NAFE ID code, which is what we're going to do, um, because I don't want to. I don't like saying Jupiter or Io. I have sort of a phobia of those names. Not really. Um, so what are the NAFE IDs? Well, hopefully I have that bookmark because I forgot about them. Um, Oh, actually, yes. Over here, uh, it should actually be in the Spice documentation somewhere. Um, but it's easier, actually, to just Google for it. It's not, they're not that hard to, uh, knife integer codes. So these are the, these are integers they assign various different things. So this is, you can read this page if you want, but really what we're interested in is the big list here. Um, the Jupiter Berry Center is five. We cannot use this because that means this, the um, why are these duplicated? Anyway, um, the Jupiter Berry Center we cannot use. That is the uh, point that is the center of uh, the center of mass of Jupiter and its moons. Because Jupiter is so much heavier than its moons, that is inside of Jupiter. It's actually very close to the center of Jupiter itself. But unfortunately, it's just a, geogra a mathematical point, geometric point. Um, and we actually need to know the shape of Jupiter. We need the whole Jupiter body as an ellipsoid. So we actually do have to go down here and use the planet Jupiter, 599. So that will be the eclipsing body, if I can do that. Um, so Jupiter will be eclipsing the sun as viewed from Io. So there's quite a bit to do still here, but that's not, that's not that hard. Uh, F-shape is the string indicating the geometrical model, and like I said, we cannot treat Jupiter as a point because we want to see it. The, the, it's the ellipsoid that eclipses. So that's a pretty simple thing to do there. So far, not too bad. And then the next two probably won't be too bad. I shouldn't say that. Uh, front shape, F frame. Okay, so now I don't think this is going to be important to us. Um, okay. The name of the body fixed, body centered reference frame associated with the front target body, uh, this in this case, uh, Jupiter. And in this case, it's just going to be IAU Jupiter. Every planet has an international astronomical union, IAU.org, um, uh, reference frame. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't even actually matter. Um, oh, actually it might, because we're modeling uh, Jupiter as an ellipse, which means it's not a perfect sphere, so we, we sort of need to know where it's longer and where it's shorter, although I think Jupiter's pretty close to a sphere. But we do have to put this in here, so we'll just put it in here very simply. Um, I've got to stop clicking on that. IAU Jupiter. Still not too bad. Um, next parameter back is the name of the target body that is occulted by the other. Now remember, in this case, we're looking from Io, Jupiter occulting the Sun. So we go over here, Look up the NAFE ID of the sun, which should be 10, by the way. It's very sad when you memorize these things. Oh, wow. If it's... Yeah, there it is. Uh, 
the sun is weird in the sense that it has a very low ID, but it is not a berry center. Uh, it, is the, it is the sun itself. So again, very simply here, that's a 10. Now, you might sort of get what B shape and B frame are going to be. Um, we'll go ahead and look at them, but I think, as you would guess, they are the back, the shape, which will be ellipsoid for the sun. Um, sorry, I've got things popping up and got to take care of them. Which will be ellipsoid for the sun, and uh, the body uh, frame will be IAU sun. That It'll be the sun's own body frame. The sun is almost a uh, perfect sphere, I think, so this, again, is not really a huge issue, but they do require it. So let's go back over here. And shall we put this on a, um, yeah, let's put this on a new line. What the hell? Um, so the first, we have the back. We need the B shape, ellipsoid. And the B frame, IAU sun. And now aberration correction, which is the, um, well, we'll take a look. Um, because it takes the sun, sunlight several minutes to reach Jupiter, um, you would think that correcting for light time, actually I think it takes several hours to reach Jupiter, um, you would think that uh, correcting for light time would be important. Uh, and it turns out it's actually not that important uh, for reasons I don't understand, but they have something to do with relativity. Uh, the distance between Jupiter and Io is trivial, and we don't need to worry about that one. However, because it doesn't cost us very much, um, let's see. XCN is sort of the heaviest option, and back when this was written, uh, these, you know, LT was much faster than XCN. Uh, today, um, uh, today I don't think it actually matters. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and use XCN. We might have to slip it down to none, um, because these are not going to make a big difference, despite what you would think. Okay, so that's IAU Sun. That's the aberration observer. So the observer is the name of the body from which you are observing. And again, we are observing from Io. So what is Io's um, NAIF code? And, I, and actually, uh, the moons are usually numbered like... Uh, so Jupiter itself is 599, which I hopefully put in there. Yeah. Uh, the moons will start at 501, 502, 503, 504. I think Io happens to be 501, but I'm not sure, so let's... Uh, I'm right. So there it is. J1, Io, 501. And Jupiter has the frickload of moons. I don't even know if this list is complete. Uh, this list, 53 moons, but I think Jupiter has closer to 77 moons now. But again, we're only interested in 501, Io for right now. So that's our back body. Um, sorry, that's our observer. Now, what's interesting here is we don't need to know the observer's shape because we're assuming a quote-unquote geocentric observer. Of course, in this case, it's an iocentric observer, a theoretical observer at the center of, of Io. And that actually could cause problems because when we have a solar eclipse on Earth, um, the shadow rarely would go as deep as the center of the Earth. Uh, so if we need to, we might need to adjust this a little bit. Uh, but for right now, we're going to take the simple option and assume uh, we have observers... Um, we have the eclipse occurs if the point if the center of io is eclipsed which is again not really a good uh, assumption but then again you know whatever um spice double step is going to be a it's going to tell us how uh step size uh nasa has this insane reason that the the default step size is one millisecond uh which i don't know would be useful to anyone we are going to use the default, we're going to use the step size of one second. And that is still really small, but it turns out it's, it turns out to be fast enough. And it turns out it's not, it doesn't do what you think it does. Um, okay, so now the, the other ones are going to be here. The other ones are going to be the last pr input parameter, and the, the, uh, the, the thing that comes out is actually an output parameter. Is a spice window that defines the time period over which the search is conducted. A uh, single interval or an, so the concept in C-SPICE is every, there's no such thing as a point in time. They only have time intervals. Now, if the time interval has the same beginning and end, that, uh, that time interval is, that, that of time interval is effectively um, a point uh, of in time. So we're not, so, and in this case, we actually do need a time interval when the occultation starts and when the occultation ends. Um, but what is the spice window? Well, this is where we are going to actually have to do a little bit of work. This is where we're going to have to sort of 
the, the parameters get less easy um, for input time. Um, and we, we'll just do a search for like a year for 2019 for right now. Uh, and later we can extend it out uh, not too far because it turns out the ephemerises or ephemeremi day, whatever the hell the plural is, I should know that, um, uh, for Io and the Jupiter's moons doesn't go uh, as far as we'd like. Uh, the eph the, eph eph the table thingies, the ephemeris for Jupiter and the planets goes uh, plus or minus 15,000 years from now. However, when you're getting down to the moons and stuff, it doesn't go that far. It, I think it goes for like 300 years. I know for Mars it only goes for like 200 years. So we, we're only going to be limited, but for right now we're just going to limit it to uh, the year 2019 roughly. We're not even going to be that correct about it. Okay? Now, like a lot of... Now you'll notice that this... Um, this function returns void, and this is actually somewhat typical of C functions. It's 100% typical in Spice. Uh, instead of trying to return a complicated object like an array, or in this case, uh, a window, which is a, considered a, to be a collection of intervals, uh, you basically pass in something. Uh, you pass in a point or two, or a result, and what you get back here is uh, when the function is ended, it has changed the value of result for you. So this is a uh, pass by reference. Uh, all of these are passed by reference except for step, which is a spice double, which is really just a double. And, um, and the function will change the value of result for you. And when the function returns, result will be the result you want. It does not actually return the result as, uh, and that's typical of these functions, especially when you're trying to return something that's very complicated and you don't necessarily want the function to build it. Okay, so the result is the result window. Okay. And that's, of course, going to tell us exactly when uh, we have Jovian lunar eclipses by IO only. But we will, of course, expand that. Okay, so now we need to do a bunch of garbage here. And what's the bunch of garbage we need to do? Well, well, let's take a look. I'm going like, to take a look at something I've done that I happen to know works. Okay. We have to include all the libraries. Um, now I've written my own library here, which isn't actually a library. It's actually a collection of C functions because I don't really know C, so I I just basically stuffed them all into a uh, into a um, into a single .h file. It works, but it's wrong. So I'm gonna not put it in right now in the hope we can uh, avoid it. Uh, for this program, we don't need to know the Earth's equatorial and polar radius radii. Max wind is just going to be a constant. It's going to say, um, I don't think there's going to be more than 10,000 results. So we just use max wind, and we can change it if we need to. Uh, just That's going to limit how many, wind, how many uh, intervals we're going to create in our window. Okay, again, this doesn't all apply here, because this is a, more, this is a different program. Um, so let's just see if we can avoid the blah, 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 GFQ. We don't need that one because we're using a very specific function here. Okay, let's see. Okay. So spice double cell is a macro defined by the C spice libraries. What this line here, well, I'm going to go ahead and copy them over. We are going to need them. Um, actually, we're also going to need the, um, um, we're going to need, we're going to need a main subroutine. And I will explain these lines here in a minute. So I'm copying like four of them, but I will I will explain them. Now, obviously, this line is just the standard start of a C main function. Spice double cell is a macro, and saying cn fine comma two, uh, that defines the variable cn fine to be a spice double cell. Um, in other words, one of those uh, windows that we're talking about that has two points in it, uh, and that means just one time interval. And that's okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to ask for the results from one time interval. Um, and again, not very deep here. The result is going to be 20,000, two times max win, 20,000 intervals. So if our result takes more than 20,000 intervals, we will probably get a segmentation fault, or maybe Spice will give us an error. But it's not going to work, basically, is going to be the issue. Um, so, but 20,000 should be more than enough. So now we've created two variables without actually creating them as macros, and those are going to be the two variables we need. The two variables that we didn't know what they were going to be, that's going to be them. We've created them. 
we're gonna, oh, well, actually, sorry. We've created the result window for the results. See, I'm fine, we've defined it. We haven't actually put a time interval in it yet, but that's okay. Okay, so now what's this line here? Well, the way that Sp C Spice does a lot of its magic is it uses ephemerises, ephemerises, whatever. There's a really fancy word that I don't know, that I do know, but I can't pronounce. That means multiple ephemeri, and it's not ephemeri. Okay, so what does this do? Well, um, Spice does a lot of its magic using uh, data files, large data files that NASA has provided. And these uh, large data files are basically tell you, they're not, it's not super simple, but it's not that hard actually. Um, they tell you where a given planet or moon or whatever is at a given time. Uh, they, and, you, and it can be done at any time because they use polynomial approximation. And uh, they're not using Hermite polynomials, but they might move to using Hermite. They're using Chebyshev polynomials right now, which I think may be the least interesting fact you will ever hear in your life, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so right now they're using Chebyshev polynomials, but you don't have to worry about any of that because the C-Spice libraries just take care of that and give you the position. They don't actually require you to understand how the uh, files are, uh, how the files are organized. So what is standard.tm? Now furnish C means we're actually including that file kind of into this file. Let's take a look at this. Well, I've removed a lot of stuff, but we might need to bring some of it back. So what we want to look at here is kernels to load. And by the way, the first time I run this, it's going to break, but I want it to break. Well, I don't, yeah, I want to sort of demonstrate why it's going to break. So the kernels I'm loading are the DE431 kernels. Again, these files come directly from NASA. I have nothing to do with them. Um, you can get them yourself. They're big, but they're free. Um, DE431 uh, converts, uh, gives us the planetary positions from plus or minus 15,000 years. Um, so, and I think it's split up, so 431 is before 1 AD and 431 is after 1 AD, but it doesn't matter. We're going to include them both. We're going to get all that data in there. Uh, the PC0010.tpc, it's a very minor issue, but it turns out you need to deal with it. Um, we have leap seconds, which means, um, yeah, I, was, I had a little speech prepared about this, and I forgot what it was. But anyway, usually the time between noon today and noon tomorrow is 86,400 seconds, 24 hours, 1,440 minutes. So that, that's fine. However, uh, it turns out the, the mean time between noon today and noon tomorrow is a fraction over 86,400 seconds. In other words, the Earth's rotation period is bigger than 86,400 seconds, and it's slowing down because of tidal friction from the moon. So to deal with that, every so often uh, we add a leap second, which pretty much no one notices, but it does mean the time between noon today and noon tomorrow, if there's a leap second at the end of today, is 86,401 seconds. So what that does is if you're using Unix time or any other sort of, you know, any pretty much any time that relies on clock time, you will be off by one second and it adds up over the years from the time that uh, NASA uses, which is called ephemeris time, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. So so this is, uh, this is just the correction for leap seconds. Now, there might be someone out there who's so pedantic they're going to say, well, you know, there is a version of Unix time that does account for leap seconds. Uh, and there is. It's called POSIXly correct, POSIXly correct Unix time. And in fact, every time zone in Unix has a POSIXly correct version, but no one uses it. And if you do use it, I don't care. So I think that that should be fine. I don't actually, I might have explained the wrong file. Give me one second here. I'm going to go to, uh, you can see this. Whoa, where's my freaking... I have an X term over here somewhere. All right, let's find my X term. Also, let's. Pff, wow. All right. I have a very slight delay on focus. Uh, uh, where things focus, and you might not be able to read this, and that's why uh, this is something I don't want to use too much of. But let's take a look at the. Uh, let's make sure I got the, uh, the the file correct here. I maybe have not. Um, one of the two files deals with, uh, one of these two files does deal with leap seconds, the other one deals with something else. Um, oh, you know what, this actually might be, by the way, this is all comments part of it. it, I think this actually might be something different. Okay, I'm sorry, this is actually, um, this actually gives you... 
well, you can read the file. It's, again, public, free. This gives you sort of the way we define um, the way we define the the prime meridian for other planets. Our prime meridian was decided by uh, people in London who decided to put it in London. Uh, big surprise there. Um, but for the other uh, other bodies, we have to kind of artificially define uh, where the uh, prime meridian is, and we also need to know around the, you know the, the poles of the planet. Uh, planets rotate around their own axes. What are those axes? Well, this is you know this is what uh, this is what uh, their axes are. And again, we need to know about nutation. This is a big mess, but you don't have to deal with it. It just tells you a lot of information that that Spice needs, but again, does not uh, does not make you think about. Now, I think actually it's the NAFI 12 TLS pro that is actually yeah there it is. This is the leap seconds kernel file. It tells you. Um, uh, what the leaps, how many leap seconds we've had. So going all the way back to the very first leap second on uh, the, I think it's actually at the end of 1971, December 31st, 1971, we added a leap second. But these are giving you the days, a the seconds after, the one second after the leap second, what year it became. Okay, so that, again, that explains this file over here. Again, I'm not going to talk about this one too much. Um, this is the file that tells us what the Earth's, and we don't actually need it because we're not even dealing with Earth today, but usually you are dealing with Earth. It tells you exactly where the North Pole is pointing, uh, how much precession nutation we have, and a bunch of other stuff that keeps Earth calculations accurate. Um, over here, I hope you can see my cursor. I know you can't see my mouse, but over here uh, we have a prediction of what the Earth will be doing between uh, 2007 to 2037. The, the latest high precision BPC, it turns out, is only really good for a few weeks, maybe a few months. And even that doesn't work if we have a major catastrophe that changes uh, the, the distribution of mass on the Earth. For example, there was a tsunami, or a tsunami, I meant to say, uh, that changed the length of the day on Earth uh, to the point where this, and obviously this file here, you know, assumes that Earth's uh, length of Earth's day is increasing. Uh, but it's pretty accurate, and again, if you needed to make accurate uh, calculations involving the Earth, this would be a good thing to have. ikikdate.tf is, again, something we're not going to use, but I'll explain anyway because I'm bored. Um, in fact, I don't even think we have it linked correctly. Oh, no, it's right here. And this is a um, very simple, um, it doesn't look that simple, but it actually is, uh, when we determine positions like right ascension and declination, and we won't be doing that today, so it doesn't matter, um, we, we can use the J2000, uh, you know, the, uh, the sort of standardized uh, epoch J2000 right ascension and declination, but they won't be 100% accurate because the Earth has precessed and mutated since then. And we could also use the ecliptic of in J2000 ecliptic, but that has not only precessed and mutated, the actual obliquity of the ecliptic, the, the angle between the ecliptic and the uh, equator, changes. So what this does here, just a big fancy way of, uh, and I think I'm pretty sure I stole this from somewhere. Um, excuse me. Um, and all this does is it basically lets you, if you want to, use the true equator and equinox of the, you know, so it would be like J2019 point whatever. And that's useful because if you want to, for example, figure out when the spring, the vernal equinox is, you cannot use the J2000 equator and ecliptic. You will be off by a, not very much, but by a little bit. So you have to use the current one. Okay, so that, that's another file we're not using, but I'm going to leave it here. The Earth Association, this, I think I know what this is. This is, um, and if I don't, we're going to find out. Earth body... Oh yeah, IAU Earth. This gives you our default reference frame uh, as defined from J2000. Again, the Earth's orbit is slowing down a little bit. Sorry, the Earth's rotation is slowing down a little bit. The North Pole is precessing, so it's not always going to be pointing in the same direction. Um, and I think this actually does very little actual work. It basically just clears up some stuff um, that so that it could be used. Okay, shall we find something else we're not going to use? Sure. See, there's no one in chat, so I can do whatever the hell I want. Um, oh, okay, this one's actually sort of important. Um, this one, 
in order to do um actually no this is not important surprisingly when nasa does you know gives us all these results they do it by using a simulate a you know multi body simulation these are the uh, gravitational mass parameters it uses i don't we could you could use them yourself if you wanted to run the differential equations yourself now a gravitational mass parameter um, it turns out we don't know the constant of gravity that well, and therefore we don't know the masses of the planets that well. However, we do know the amount of force they exert on us, and that is uh, we multiply the constant of, well, well, it would be the multiplication of the gravitational constant by the mass of the planet, but we don't know either of those that well, but we do know the combination of them, uh, you know, uh, which is going to be, uh, uh, this is, I don't think it's actually a mass. It's called gravitational mass. It's the amount of force that a planet, uh, you know, pulls with against other planets. And so that's uh, 301 is our moon. 399 is us. I don't know if we're, we might not be in here. Because the Earth stuff is calculated to, you know, the Earth's parameters are calculated very accurately. For other stuff, these, these are somewhat approximate. I mean, they're not that approximate, but we, they don't, we don't need them at the same precision we need for Earth. And we don't know them for the same precision we know for Earth. Okay, great. Is there anything else we're not going to be using? Sure. Um, that looks like... Okay. Uh, this is really the same thing as this file, except this covers us from 1972 to 2007. Um, you know, uh, April 26th. And I don't know why they split it into two different pieces. They did. Again, this doesn't matter to us because we're not actually looking from Earth. Okay. So that was pointless, but I'm happy. Oh, wow, now if I can find my own... Um... All right, here we go. Okay, so now we just need to call this function. It can't be that simple. No, 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 we actually need to define... We need to put into CN find the one-year period that we're going to be looking through. And to do that, I will cheat by looking at my program that actually works. There it is. Um, and... Okay. So, to create the function we're going to be using here is, by the way, the underscore C is just because we're in the C language. Uh, this was, uh, Spice was originally written in Fortran, and uh, there might be even older versions of Spice that were used, like, on really, really old computers. So, when inst C, let's take a look at that function real quick, see what that does. I mean, we know what it does, but... Um, um, Insert an interval into a double precision window. DP here means double precision. I know there's another definition of DP that some of you are thinking of, and you are sick, sick perverts. Okay. Um, so this is a very simple function. It's basically, uh, it's going to take left and right, spice double. So these are just very simple numbers. They're not that complicated. They're not anything fancy. And spice cell window we passed in, but it's actually going to return that value. Um, and somewhere here it should talk about ephemeris time. Are the left and right endpoints, and the output, meaning the thing we get back, that we send in and get back, is a double precision spice cell window. Unfortunately, it looks like it does not talk about, I'm gonna cheat and see if it does, oh, it doesn't. Um, no, it doesn't, wow. Uh, required reading here is gonna be, um, there should be a freaking time thing here. All right. Um, I'm not sure I want to dig this up because there is a required reading for called time and it tells you a lot of cool stuff about, uh, you know what, I, I'm going to lie to myself. Um, pretty sure it's just called time. Let's see if we can fake this. Yeah. And here, the time they use for pretty much everything, and I'll highlight this, is called ephemeris time. Uh, and ephemeris time is basically the number of seconds from something. We'll find out when. But it doesn't stop for leap seconds like uh, Unix time does or clock time does. It just keeps going forever. Um, uh, it unstops. So, you know, because the planets don't stop during a leap second, so this time zone doesn't either. So now the question, of course, is uh, how do we convert, how do we get this, um, how do we deal with this, uh, this ephemeris time, and the answer is I am going to use vclibh, which is not, and I've written some subroutines to help us out here. Um, 
planet to string, miles to kilometers, kilometers that is really basic. Uh, year to ET, okay. Um, and I think I like Unix time, and so therefore everyone does. So what we need, I want to get, I'm going to use the Unix time for all of this stuff. Um, and this function Unix to ET will convert, um, will convert Unix time to ephemeris time. This little delt ET here is basically just to deal with uh, leap seconds. Uh, but generally, Unix time this, uh, which I wonder if I can cut and paste, yeah. And let's find out, I think that's 1970 or 2000, let's see when it is. Yeah, oh, actually, yeah, it's the, it's called the Epoch. It's the noon GMT, the year 2000. That's when ephemeris time has its zero. You can go back in time to negative numbers, but that's when it has its zero. So basically all we do is subtract Unix seconds from this number, and then we add delta, the number of leap seconds, uh, because ephemeris time does go s march ahead one second, unlike uh, the positively uncorrect Unix time that I'm using. So two things I need to do now, w one of which is to simply include BC lib h, which I knew I was going to do, and it does get included in the most hideous way, which is, um, uh, I'm going to cheat some more and look at how I did in the other one, but it's not, it's, it's just basically wrong. And in fact, I'm going to include the thing that says it is wrong because I know it's wrong. So we basically just include it as a, fu as, you know, a quoted file directly into this, which gives us access to all the subroutines. Okay, so now, um, spice double, by the way, can be declared the same way as double. Uh, and let me be nice and declare all my variables ahead of time. Spice double. Uh, T1 and T2, it's really not going to matter. So T1 equals Unix to, e and these are just doubles, nothing fancy. Uh, Unix to ET. And, yeah, okay. Now, you might say, well, when the heck is the beginning of this year? Well, that's really easy. Uh, date minus D, and I know this is, you can't see this really well. In fact, let me be really crazy and open up a shell in Emacs. For those of you who believe Emacs is a shell. That's nice. I like that. Okay, so the date command tells you what time it is, uh, and I have this machine set to uh, Greenwich Mean Time, or UTC. Um, but the date minus D command will let you, uh, let you set your time to something else. So that's pretty awesome. Oh, and you can sort of use history here, but in a weird way. But that doesn't tell us how many seconds. That just gives us sort of a, uh, just, you know, tells us what the date looks like. But the plus percent S option will give you, whoa. Date the argument lacks a leading. Okay, I think maybe my history thing didn't work quite well, which is okay in this case because we're not being really fancy. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the minus D has to be immediately followed by the date. Plus percent S will come over here. And Viola, we have that uh, the beginning of uh, this year was this time. And since we're in Emacs, we can just cut and paste it. I'm very happy about that, actually. Um, so the question is, when's the end of this year? We could just add to that number uh, 365 times 86,400, but you know, let's be let's be wacky. Uh, and of course, the uh, end of this year is the beginning of next year, because that's how we do things. Okay, so we do this. I'm I'm surprised if this is probably not going to work, but I'm getting more and more convinced it actually might. Okay, so now all systems are go. Well, no, not quite. Um, where did I put my WI? Okay. So let's go here and go to the... Uh, the only thing we, we need to actually do now is we need to insert... Uh, we have this interval. It's empty right now, the CN fine interval. Um, and all we have to do here... Where are we doing it from? Blah, 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 blah. Come on. There it is. Create a window. So we just need to create a window with these two times in it. And again, we don't really create it. We just send in the, a reference to it, and it gets magically done. So for us, the times will be T1 and T2. And I will probably space a little bit better than I did in the other file. OK, fantastic. So now, what is there left to do that we've created the, um, we've created everything we need? Well, hell, <laughs> let's just call the frickin' function now. 
And we do have a window for results, which we need, so it's important. Um, and the last two parameters now we can fill in, which are, of course, the um, confinement window, which is the time zone time we're looking at, and the result window. Um, now, to be honest, if this compiles, I will be freaking amazed. And since we can... Oh, uh, let's leave all this crap over here for right now. Okay, so if this if this compiles, I will be amazed. Um, so we're now in this directory. Um, I have a program called BC. Su I don't remember why, but for some reason I can't do a regular compile on these, or I can it gets difficult. So I have a Perl function that uh, that does this. Ooh, and maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um, Obscuration. In file included from BC Obscurations, expected cons by. I, I think that's just a warning, though. All right. The way to check is uh, if when it is made correctly, and you can look at BC sudo make. It's not that fancy. Well, let's look at it right now. And since we're in, <laughs> since we're in Emacs, we don't need to do a less. Um. So the, the the sort of I don't even know why I'm doing it this way, but it's it's I don't know. But anyway, basically this is what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to compile with a few extra. O2 gives us some nice warnings that we could use. It includes the uh, C spice include, which I have over here, and then you know it uh, links in the math library LM, and it might lapse in you know links in the uh, C spice library, which is of course what we what we need. Uh, now let's see if if this has worked, there should be something called um, BC uh, Obscuration. There it is! So now all we need to do is run BC Obscurations and watch it fit. Cool. Segmentation fault. Did not expect that. Uh, I expected a different error. Uh, let's find out. Now this is where things get really ugly trying to debug C. Alrighty, let's take a look here. Um, spy stuff. This is not a very long program, actually. The rest of this is just comments. The only thing I can think of is... No, I can't. Um, spy stuff will furnish. T1. The only thing I can think of is that somehow um, there's more than 20,000 uh, results. And you know what? We're going to just pump that up to a million because this has got a lot of memory, got a lot of not very expensive. Um, so let's go ahead and do this again. And then, unfortunately, uh, the one thing this doesn't do really well. Segmentation fault. Beautiful. Gorgeous. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Spice double T1, T2. Is it unhappy that I am not initializing? No, it should initialize to zero. Uh, furnish this. There is a mistake in this program, and I, I'm going to get to it in just a minute, but but that shouldn't have any effect. Um, all right, now the something that really shouldn't need to do with C programming <laughs> is we're going to comment out a line of code and see if it uh, works then. And since we're getting more and more annoyed by this, we're going to do all at one step here. Although that's actually not going to... Well, actually... And I think I can cut and paste it, so we can just use it. Segmentation fault. Let's run it again. Segmentation fault. Okay, so that didn't help. Um, I might have made my CN fine window too small. And this two should be fine, though, but, but I mean, that's the kind of minimum size you need it to be. Still segmentation fault. Okay. Um, getting trickier to see what the hell's wrong. Um, this should not be an issue. Well, let's come in at the whole freaking thing now. I can't assign to very... Oh, no, I can't, actually. Cool. Segmentation fault still. Um, all right. Let's watch you not even bother to compile... And we don't even need this anymore. Let's watch you not compile any freaking thing at all. And I know it will. Still segmentation fault. Very nice. Let's see if we can find out what the hell's wrong with it, though. Uh, error processing invalid directive ellipsoid. Oh. 
well. That shouldn't be the problem, but you know, maybe it is. Although, oh, 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 I'm sorry, because I have a comment line here. Um, oh wait, these are probably not comments in C, are they? Okay, so let me try this again here. See, I told you I didn't know C. Uh, okay, so let's actually get rid of the, these things one at a time correctly this time. Maybe. Okay, so I think the problem might be in here, so let's go ahead and comment out this line. Uh, and I'm going to be obnoxious and make this into one line, even though it's just ugly. Ooh, that that's too ugly. Like that. Okay. Um, that seemed to actually work. Yay. Didn't do anything. Now, of course, it doesn't do anything, because even if we do this run the subroutine GF occult C, uh, and GF stands for geometric finder. It's all the functions that find some amount of time are called GF functions. Um, so what am I doing wrong here? Well, let's try this. Okay, and let's see if the actually has complained about anything. In node expected constant... Oh! Oh! Badness. And what I did wrong. Now it turns out that even though you can send this integers, uh, this routine integers, or strings, you can only really send it strings. So you have to do this. You have to quote your integers, because they're not really integers, they're really strings that look like integers. Uh, something, something, something. That's annoying. Okay, didn't like it still. Expected spice double, but whoa! Oh shit! Have I? Yeah. Okay, some of them. Let's take a look at the sig function signature again, huh? That'll be fun. See if I haven't fucked it up totally. Um. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and so char star of course is a string, string, string all the way down to observer, which is t uh, observer is five oh, oh one yeah. Step actually does have to be a freaking double. So now, hopefully. Yes, this is the error message I was hoping to show you guys. Haha. <laughs> Insufficient ephemeris data has been loaded to, um, to show basically where Jupiter is. Um, state of 501 IO relative to zero solar system Berry Center. Which is, by the way, everything is, is sort of centered on the solar system Berry Center. That's the ICRF reference frame. Actually, it's IC reference frame. International Celestial Reference Frame. So why did this error that came way too late happen? Well, you'll notice that one of the things I removed was this uh, jupe310.bsp. What this See, th these files contain um, information for planet Berry centers, uh, but they don't contain information about where the planet's moons will be. Um, for Jupiter, there are several files that contain information about where the, uh, the moons will be. Um, and let's see if I can be daring. I, I happen to know that Jupe310 is the one we need. But hey, let's be instructive somehow. Um, this may not work. Um, Uh, let me actually see if I can find it using the wonderful Unix find function. Um, CSpice has some really nice auxiliary programs, there they are, uh, that will tell you stuff about, uh, about the files that they use for data. So it's really nice. Um, and I probably should have put them somewhere, but let's see if I can get the data on Jupyter300.bsp which I don't have linked here. Why? Oh, because it's going to be in kernels. Tell me something about this. Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm unhappy. <sighs> okay. Well, then don't. 
Um, all right, hang on. It might be that I ha have not bothered to link uh, this. To, I, I basically I'm linking all of the kernels to spice tilde kernels, so I don't have to dig in where they are. But they're actually in fairly deep. Um, so deep, in fact, I don't know where they are. That's not good. I could have sworn I downloaded all the kernels. All right, hang on. We're gonna have to now take a look at what I did. Um, and I, I, they're actually on my main machine, and I are synced them over. Uh, but that then they're and I basically downloaded the. Um, yeah, this should be in here. Oh, they are not in here. That is not good. So my R sync. I wonder if I have that in my history still. Okay. So you probably can't see this. Wow, that's not the one I want, but yeah, cool. Uh, you probably can't see this, but that's okay. There's nothing dangerous about it, but... Um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and re -R sync. I don't know what the hell happened last time. I'm going to R sync over the kernels from uh, Mount Kemptown, which is a uh, drive on my main machine. And the you know the IP address if you want to hack me is 198.168.04. I'm just kidding, of course. That's a local IP address because we're on the same local area network here. All right, let's see if this uh, does what I want it to do. And my password there, I will uh, tell you, is uh, I forgot. Oh, what the actual hell? Okay, I'm going to now leave you with this. I'm going to check to see what happened over here. I'm pretty sure I downloaded these last night um, because I remember downloading these last night. Uh, is that a is that a nice uh, tautology? And if I didn't, we're going to be in trouble because these things are pretty damn big. Um, huh. Uh. Not cool. Oh, you know what? I, I keep they're in a different place on my machine, which actually you probably just saw. They're under no backup um, kernels, and then they're really kind of buried, kind of deep. Um, okay, we are now in panic mode. According to this. According to what I'm looking at here, on my other machine, I should be able to go to... Let me make sure it's SPK. Yeah, SPK are the Spice Kernels, so... Yeah. They're not the Spice Girls, by the way. And let's see what I have over here. Oh, I do have... Okay, I have no idea why that wasn't working earlier. But okay. And by the way, um, n you know, we could, of course, just look at... Uh, uh, at, we could use the comment function to look at this, but I just realized all of these things come with very nice uh, comment CMT files. So here, this is the uh, Jupiter 310, you know, satellite ephemeris release. It contains Io, Ganymede, and Jupiter itself, because Jupiter is not in the same position as its own berry center. It, it's a little bit off. Um, so this is the file we need. So what was Jupiter 300? Why does it have a lower number? I don't know, but what is it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why did I download? Oh, you know what? I think, I think Jupiter 300 has been. Uh, it's an old version. Yeah, here it is. Uh, this used to be the uh, the file for uh, all these freaky moons, but I think they've replaced it now because uh, they have better data. By the way, uh, interestingly, here the NAFE IDs are 500 something for Jupiter's real moons, but 55,000 something for the fragments of of comet, the comet that crashed into it, whose name I can't remember, but I know. Um, it has a hyphenated name, and I make fun of it all the time. One moment. Okay, I'm just going to assume you guys can look that up. It's uh, something dash something. Uh, but, okay. Um, so this tells us that Jupiter 310 is the file we need. Uh, so we're going to go back over here to standard.tm, 
and we're going to add Jupiter 310. And oh, you know what? I think I need to link it though, because right now I don't have. Um, where do I, where my shell? There's my shell. Okay. So I'm trying to link everything into basically. Um, wow, wow, into kernels. So now I'm going to have to do. Um, S no, no, actually it's. Yeah, robots.txt doesn't really count. General big. <sighs> Satellites. Star.bsp. All of them. Here. Cool. And so now I can go back over here. Back to, and just add this line, which should correctly now resolve. We're going to have another issue here in just a second, but it's going to be a very minor one. I think you can actually leave the. Uh, the trailing comma there. BSP are, by the way, the binary uh, spice ephemeris files. Uh, XSP is uh, the text files, text spice. You can convert them to XSP for transfer, but what's more interesting is in the XSP you can actually see uh, what the polynomials are. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, but of course, you can't, that's, that's not for final use, that's for uh, if you are really into that kind of thing. So now, we should get a different error message, because we are going to include the uh, kernel. Um, if I can, there's my shell. Um, okay, because I'm in the wrong directory, that didn't work. I was kind of surprised that it didn't do anything. Okay, I'm just going to not use the history function here. Okay. And now, of course, I didn't actually run it. Oh, well. Well, well, well. And you know why? Because on this machine, I've decided to be as generic as possible and say home user, which is what I should have been doing in the first place, but I didn't. So there is no Barry Carter on this machine. There is no Barry Carter. All right. Okay. Oh, right, because I don't have bin in my path, but that should be a problem. Okay. Taking longer than I expected, maybe because I have, like, the frickin' set to look a million. But the, uh, the, the point here is it's running. The, the badness here, of course, is uh, it's not showing us any results because there's no place that we actually print this crap. So let's go ahead and make a couple of fixes to this. Um, first of all, let's not declare a million size window. Let's go ahead and declare it down to just 10,000, maybe. And second of all, let's see if we can actually print these results that we've now gotten, these wonderful results that we have in result. And uh, we can always turn to my other functions for this, my other uh, program for this. Show results, and I think that's probably a subroutine here, and probably is something we can actually use here. Um, okay, and we're not going to copy the show results uh, subroutine. But we are going to sort of um, use this. Um, so I think... Um, why do I have a VBEG and VEND? Ah, I guess we'll find out. So we're just going to copy this code and I'm going to explain it so it's not totally foreign. Okay. Uh, so what this does here, the... Seriously? You don't know how to freaking format code? Ugh. Anyway. Um, we're just going to declare an integer called nres. Wn card c is the cardinality of a window. So we want to know how big the, how many results we actually got. We know that the window uh, can hold 10,000 results. We probably didn't get that many or whatever. Uh, so that's that. And we're going to declare some uh, doubles here because so what we want to do is loop through every res every element, every window in result. So I zero to n res i plus plus um, w n f fat d. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and check that, but I'm pretty sure that just sucks out the um, that just sucks out the um, the two the two intervals, the two endpoints. Um, yep, that is what it does. 
Uh, Fetch is a particular, and, and we only have, um, in this, all of the ones we've done, we only have one double precision window. You can have multiple windows, uh, you can have multiple intervals in a given window, and you can have multiple windows as your result. So this is a little bit complicated, but it's not that complicated. Um, so we're saying from result, we want, oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong about that. There are multiple intervals in this result. And so this fetches the ith one, and it fetches it into bag and end, which we have um, we have just put up there, um, which we just declared up here. So this should be the ephemeris times of the interval. Now, why the hell am I doing this? And I think this is actually wrong for this program. Uh, UDFNS. Mm. UD funds. No, actually, so that's wrong. That's actually something I need for that program, but I don't need it for this program. So now, this is going to be pretty useless here. We're going to print um, now etd unix, as you might guess, is a function that converts ephemeris time back into unix time. We could just print the raw values themselves. Um, but that's not going to be very useful to us. Well, actually, it might be somewhat useful to us. Uh, but we're going to do, do one step ahead, which is we're going to go ahead and... Uh, what? The fudge. It's not this map. Where do you think I should be? Why does it not like that line? Is it because I have a space here? I mean, this is the parenthesis that matches that. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to see a, a list of when, as viewed from IO, uh, this probably won't work, but if it does, when viewed from IO, uh, Jupiter is eclipsing the sun, which means effectively IO is dark. And we can use Stellarium to actually verify, <laughs> if it works, uh, these results. Well, verify in the sense that we, we hope that they are correct about these two. And we need to, okay, that was really kind of bad. I think the million, uh, the million uh, was really good. Should have worked, but this is a VM, of course. It's not as powerful as my main machine, so there's that too. Okay, not a great start. By the way, all the other error messages you're seeing are other error messages. I know it's very exciting for you. Um, yeah, that's right. I have two unused variables, in fact. Okay, this is not doing what it should be doing. I should not be taking this long, even on a slow machine like this. Slow VM like this. So we're going to give it a couple more seconds, and then we're going to do terrible things to it. Uh, let's go ahead and look over here to make sure we're not already doing terrible things. Um, Unix ET... Yeah, these times are not that far apart. I might need to increase the step size. That might be the issue. Um, although, honestly, putting a step size of 1 here, it doesn't actually use a step size of 1. There's something, it does something a little bit different. This is like the uh, what's known as the minimum tolerance or something. All right, let's see if it's decided to answer us. It has not. All right, so let's go ahead and crank this baby up to 36, uh, 1 hour. I could be wrong, actually. You know what? I think... This is the interval it uses, but you can actually find windows smaller than this. Uh, what, what this means here, 3600 seconds is an hour. If there is an eclipse lasting less than an hour, which actually could happen, we're not going to catch it. We might not catch it unless we happen to get lucky. So I think that was the problem. Although I have no idea what I'm doing, so I really don't know. Um, dun, 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 dun. Dun -dun. There's only 8,400 hours or so in, in, in a year, so this is, this really should be running a little bit faster than this, unless I, unless, and of course this is the uh, unused variable, oh shoot, you know what, I might have it set so that even if there's a warning, um, It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't compile. 
And one way to check this, of course, is just to look at the time of the C file and the time of the bin file. Um, so yes, it looks like the 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 bin file was not uh, was updated uh, about a long time ago, whereas the C file was updated just now. So let's fix that real quick. Okay. Yeah, this might be the only thing I dislike about using Emacs as a shell, is having to. Ooh. All right. All right. So this is this is a good check. Each undeclared identifier prefix is under. Oh yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> this is what you get for cut and pasting code. Um, we we will need to deal with that in a minute, but right now we're not dealing with that. Okay, so that actually would be really bad because you can't print f that shit. Um, all right, let's try it again. Okay, and now ls minus l should actually be a better way of doing that. I mean, there would be if you had, if I had the real shell going. Yay! Now we actually have it uh, at the same time, which means it actually did compile, which means uh, this won't work. Well, that was interesting. It worked for some reason. Um, that's why I'm shocked. Um... All right. Well, Mr. Smarty Pants, if you're going to work on me, let's just randomly, by randomly, I mean not randomly, pick one of these intervals that looks fairly long. This one looks fairly long. Uh, about 10,000 seconds. Go he over here. Get a date minus D on it, which we can only do for, um, it doesn't work with decimal seconds. Um, so this looks like Wednesday, March 27th, 2019, about 2 in the morning. Uh, we should see a lunar eclipse from Jupiter or a solar eclipse from Io. Th th those are the same thing. So now we will test this by totally screwing this up. Because I know I want to run Stellarium in a window because they still need to be able to come back to where I am now. Uh, oh, cool. And I think by default it runs full screen. So I'm going to say Stellarium minus F no. Run. And wow, it didn't, didn't go full screen. Okay, so now we need to do a little bit of work here. Um, and the first part of the work is figuring out where the hell the menu is. So that's not good. Oh, shoot. The window it's running in is bigger than the virtual screen. So let's do this. Not great, but more than enough. There we go. So we're going to change where our location is. If I can remember which one of these things that does that. It's F6 or something. Um, I always get this wrong. F yes. Okay. So planet, if we can get Io in here, that would be really fantastic. Because then we can, we can at least all right, planet Io, and we're just going to go to um, roughly this equator stuff. Okay. Oh, we need to name this uh, Io one. We'll add it to our list because we might want to go there again. Oh, and we're calling it France. So Io one is in France, just so you know. Okay, from Iowa, there's <laughs> and there's our beautiful planet Jupiter, um, and of course we're not yet at the March twenty seventh point. So there's Jupiter. Um, wow, it's a little bit wobbly. Okay, um, and let's see if we can find the Sun. Hey, there's Callisto. Cool. The Sun might actually be. Oh yeah, because it's not shining right now, and the Sun is down. Okay, so we want to go now to March twenty seventh of two thousand nineteen with the wow. I got that twice correct. Okay. And it occurs to me the sun might be below the horizon when this occurs, so this <laughs> we need to do a little bit more checking. Um, and let's just start at zero hour and we'll kind of go forward. It's at 2 a.m. is when we're saying it's the thing is happening. Um, So let's find the sun. Here comes the sun. I uh, should not sing. And we... Okay. Sun has not risen yet. Now... Whew. 
well, let's just crank up the time a little bit here. So we're not actually, we might still see the eclipse actually. Because of course now we're on a totally different planet. Weird things are happening. Sunri sunri sunrise, finally. Um, and now where is Jupiter? It's not that close, is it? Uh, it's a little bit close. So we said it was going to happen at, holy crap. I think I have it in the uh, in the kill buffer. So actually, we can just go over here, date minus D. At 27th, are we on the wrong day? I think I am. I'm awesome. All right, let's try this again. And again, the time means nothing because we are on a different planet. Um, so don't. Uh, don't assume the time has anything to do. Oh, hello. So there's the sun, and there's Jupiter. Oh, let's just go. You know, we could just go backwards slowly in time, but let's. Oh, no, I don't want that. The freaking sun. Or Jupiter, it doesn't really matter. All right, so this is gorgeous. That's the sun, that's Jupiter. I think we know what's going to happen, but let's watch it happen. I could use the backwards time flow, but I want to go a little bit faster than that. I want to go a little bit. Okay, here we go. Here we go. 441, 440. Uh, hey, we have a solar eclipse on Io. And let's go ahead and go right to the middle of that freaking eclipse. So we'll, when we look from Jupiter, we will see it as a uh, as a lunar eclipse of Io. Beautiful. Love it. There it is. Io, you can't, the sun, you can't see it on Io because of Jupiter. So the amazingly and somewhat surprisingly, the code actually worked. All right, now let's go to, uh, you know, Jupiter. What the hell? In our super fast spaceship. I have been to Io. There's actually a little song about that um, um, in Red Dwarf. Okay, now, now we're un looking. Okay, not good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Help, mommy. Oh, okay, sorry. We're on, we're on Jupiter now, and the sun has not risen yet, which is okay, because I don't really care about the sun. I want to know where Io is. That's not what I asked for. Io. Hi ho, hi ho, I want. Um. Wow, I never had that problem before. I think if you do. There we go. Tab, tab, tab. Io, the moon. And, oh, unshininess. Um, it does not appear to be eclipsed, although if you look at the magnitude numbers in the top left corner, uh, the magnitude is 11.92, which is pretty faint. So let's just see if we can, um, we can move it out of the eclipse zone and see if it gets brighter or something. Maybe this is the eclipse brightness. Okay, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. Uh, shiny. Uh, this, the, the, the sun is basically Jupiter sun. We don't care. So let's see if uh, anything happens here as we go closer to the eclipse. Minus 10 is very bright. It's getting brighter. Extinct to two might mean atmospheric extinction, uh, which I didn't realize Jupiter had. Well, I guess it, it has to. It's sort of a gas giant. Okay, so as we proceed towards eclipse time. Oh, this might be very, very bad. Okay, wow, I was really cruising there. But one thing it's not doing is being eclipsed. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Back up a little bit. I missed a very important uh, change point. Okay, now you'll notice Io's magnitude is negative 10.68. Um, negative, still very bright, 10.07, very bright. Nine getting dimmer, because higher magnitudes are dimmer. Uh, whoa, that was way too, am I, oh, I have a, my time is going, I'm going to pause my time so I can be more in charge here. Okay, so minus 9.97, very bright. Minus, so now it's getting dimmer, but I think there's a point where it just suddenly just disappears. Let's see if we can find that point. Oh, okay, whoa, 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 so that's, 
that's really interesting for me. Okay, so very, very rapid decline in increase in magnitude, decline in brightness. Uh, starting, I mean, the first, you know, the first contact, whatever, but I mean, the whole moon pretty much disappears. Goes from minus 1.2 to 11, which is invisible pretty much. Uh, at 20537 GMT, I, yeah, the stellarium here should be on GMT. Um, which is like within three minutes of when I predicted it. In fact, I think 20256 is where you would find that it starts to get dimmer. But let's see if what happens actually. Minus 10.39 gets, yeah, so maybe it's not quite that way, but yeah. So apparently uh, it doesn't show that there's an eclipse, but it does show that the magnitude has become so high that the IO is effectively invisible. Um, so now, of course, that means the question is, do, will this work for other moons? Uh, and are the other timings correct? But I mean, having one correct is really pretty damn good. Uh, so um, so we, we're somewhat confident this is going to work for other moons, for other, uh, for other times than the one we just tested. Um, but now, as for now, I have been streaming for one hour, 15 minutes, which is pretty much my time limit. Not really. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call this the end of the stream. But uh, you know what? We might pick this up later today or tomorrow or never. I could die. You never know. I'm pretty old. All right. Thank you very much for watching the stream and uh, goodbye.